Los Angeles, the entertainment capital of the world. Every day, thousands of actors compete with one another, hoping to land the role of their dreams. In his Century City office, veteran talent agent Joel Eisner is meeting with one of his oldest clients, eager to take their career to the next level. I'm at a point as an actor, creatively, where I need to branch out. And what worries me is I think I might be getting typecast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, most people don't even know my name's not Predator. It's Howard. Is it? You know, I've been doing this a long time now. You know, and it's not that I'm ungrateful for my career, I am. It's just I want to prove that I can be more than just the perfect killing machine. I've got so much more to offer. Did you know I can sing? I work together, and I understand where he's coming from. I really do. But, you know, he's got it extra hard because of, uh, you know, all this <laughs> Yeah, the, what, whatever, mandibles. Is that what they're called, mandibles? You know, a lot of it, I think, is ageism. I do, and that's something that's plagued this industry for years, but no one said show business is fair. <laughs> if it were, Wesley Snipes would have an Oscar by now. A blade. We've got a good thing here. Why do you want to hop off the gravy train, baby? It's not that. I just don't feel creatively satisfied. I hear what you're saying, but I just think for someone like you, it's going to be tough. Well, look, I did what you said. I got some new headshots made. Let's take a look. Got this, you know, I'd love to be in a legal drama, like, you know, a courtroom and comedy, which is something I'm incredibly passionate about. You know, shows a different side. <laughs> And then, I've got this one. You want to be French? Maybe. <laughs> you know, like an art house film or something, black and white. I just want to be seen as something other than a mass murdering space tourist. What about a rom com where you fell in love with another predator? Stop saying predator. Yeah, I, I mean, I do feel bad for him. I mean, he, he's great to work with. He's got a lot of talent, for sure. I mean, I guess if, if I had one complaint, it's just that he, uh, he's always doing these Austin Powers impressions. It's like, the movie's like 20 years old. Um. Frustrated with his predicament, Howard has decided to take matters into his own hands by answering an open casting call. Four o'clock, yeah. I'll, I'll be there. No, that, that's, that's brilliant. That, that's fine. I'll be... I'll absolutely be there. No, no, thank you. OK, bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Guess he's got themselves an audition. Uh, the listing said they're looking for someone my height, my build, athletic. Um, so I don't want to jinx it, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. Shaken, not stirred, martini. Shaken. Sorry, it's, it's Chris, isn't it? And for Howard, I think we've actually got a friend in common, Jamie Lennox. You were in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers with him. Yeah, yeah he's such a good guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Such a good guy. I've seen him in one. He's doing West Side Story now. Officer Krupke. Um. Howard Goldschwartz. Oh, that's me. Wish me luck. Good luck, brother. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Unfortunately for Howard, the audition did not go quite as planned. Next! Oh, come on! <laughs> OK, you know, I realise I'm not conventional looking by Hollywood standards, you know, but that's not going to stop me pursuing my dream. You know, in fact, I recently just joined an improv group. <laughs> you know, Home Improvement. It's a pun. Yeah, we have a good time. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm doing what I have to do to get by. And so for you, Mum, we have the wild Pacific halibut, the green pea risotto with a lemon and oil dressing. And for you, sir, the beef bourguignon, parpadelli pasta, a sweet chili reduction. Uh, can I get anybody any? Um, I, I, I didn't order this. I'm sorry, sir. I, I said I didn't order this. Are you deaf? I'm gluten intolerant. Right, it's just, sorry, that's what I've got written down. I don't care what you've got written down, you ugly, crab-faced idiot.
After a lengthy and very public lawsuit, which Howard was able to settle out of court, his luck finally changed. It's crazy how things can turn on a dime in this town, you know? You are now looking at America's next major sitcom star. <laughs> Groovy, baby! <laughs> <laughs> That must be Cousin Drew. Now, remember what I told you, kids. Be polite. He's come a long way to see you. Did somebody order a pizza? Extra spicy! <laughs> it Takes a Village went on to become a rating smash. Unfortunately for Howard, a vicious online petition received over 19 million signatures in under a week and he was recast after the very first episode. <laughs> am I upset with how things ended up? Of course I am. You know, but uh, no one said it was easy. You've got to take the good with the bad in this town. But I'm an optimist. I, I still believe the perfect part is out there for me. I'll tell you one thing for certain. I'm not going back. You won't see me in another Predator movie again. Following the filming of this documentary, Howard signed on for a further six Predator films. He still does improv twice a week. <laughs> <laughs>